Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is a weekend review for the week ending September 10th, 2021. Um, it is September 11th, so take a moment, think back, 20 year anniversary. I'm sure we all know people um, that were affected by that, so uh, take a moment. All right, so we're taking a look here at SPY, the daily chart. Uh, we do have a couple things I want to point out, right? We're still in a series of higher lows and higher highs. Everyone's been calling for the top every single one of these dips. Um, I do believe this was the last correction. I do believe this is the wave that we've been in. Um, and I do believe it's pretty obvious to count uh, the trend when you just look at it as a series of higher lows and higher highs. Uh, you could say that this was our last little ABC here. Um, doesn't really matter. There's a couple things I want to point out. This low here from August 19th, uh, 434.50, uh, that low was made pre-market, and uh, it's possible that it gets challenged. And if that low breaks, the 434.50, that'll be the first time they've broken the daily higher low pattern going back to September last year. Almost one full year of daily higher lows and higher highs. Almost. I mean, there's a couple exceptions in here, like this period right here. But in general, every time uh, it led to a higher high or a new all-time high. So the things that I will point out here is you do have this bullish momentum still intact, this bullish divergence. You're still above the zero line daily doesn't look bad at all. Um, and then this histogram every single time goes to negative 17, uh, negative 0.17, negative 0.17, negative 0.2. So the last four bear jabs, you know, these little, these little cuts, the last four of them were exactly this same amount of momentum. I do find that very strange. Whatever, close below the 20 on the daily, close below the five on the weekly, still above the 10 on the weekly, still above the 20. So as much as as painful as this is to hear, um, I remain long the shares of SPY that I own, as long as she's above the 20 on the weekly, it will take two closes below the 20 at minimum for me to reevaluate that. Uh, right now, the trend is up hold and every dip should be bought the other market that has that same sentiment is the queues uh, we do have a close at low on week 376.25 376.59 uh, 376.83 so we did close below the previous week's low we do have a gap here at 376.09 so they're gonna start Monday with a gap fill uh, on the weekly, which is likely. I will say that bearish divergence that you just saw on the weekly does exist on the daily, same, same thing here, but still in an uptrend, there's nothing wrong with this chart. Any dip into the 100 is for buying. Again, the higher low pattern, 358.67. So any low greater than 358.67 is for buying. QQQ looks fine, looks strong. Um, that being said, structure structure wise, I see you know one, two, something like three, four, five wrapping up here pretty soon. Okay. So when I look at these markets, I don't see risk reward as good on QQQ. I see positive 3%, negative 6%. Okay, not good risk reward. SMH, similar scenario, right? Clearly in an ascending channel, trying to break out. If she can get above this line, we can get to this line here. Um, but again, you know, we'll probably just pull back into the moving averages, then come up and set another high. I mean, it's the exact same thing, right? Going back to May, higher lows, higher highs. And every time it breaks, it breaks once, and then it's completely rebuilt, right? 
So by the dip in SMH, you do have a bearish divergence. Weekly bullish cross just happened. Histograms above zero. So they've been selling since last March is what it looks like to me. And now it's done. As long as they stay above 258.59, every dip is for buying. Um, and the target is 300 plus. Does not change. That's that's the the plan. IWM is just way different. Um, a lot harder to to analyze, in my opinion. It's just all this sideways chop. Um, the other markets, you know, how, uh, SMH we were just looking at, right? This area of balance or this rectangle pattern or whatever you want to call it. On SMH, that was tilted. It was angled up. Right, and that's because it's more bullish. The more bullish charts will have these balance areas on an on an incline. Uh, not IWM. The, the only way, you know, I'll point out some things that I that I see here with IWM right off the top. Um, it it certainly looks like a contracting triangle. Uh, I will point out, you know, lower high. Right, high, lower high, lower high, lower high. That's a bit concerning, um, especially with low, higher low, higher low, lower low. Right, so something here changed because at this point you've got you know low, high, higher low, higher high, lower low, higher high, lower low. So it was and just to to make this easier for everyone to see it was it was right here this is when it started right and then from there you got this sorry where it's just like expanded out in price and time that's why right now i'm expecting it to come back up here before it does its little pullback again but I, look it's stuck in balance. Um, we have tagged the 200 now two times. Above the 40 is okay, but now she's below the 20. You look at the weekly chart, you see the same contracting nature we were talking about, but this is the third tag at the 40. I don't want to buy this anymore. At this point, I'm wondering why it's not going up. It's a red flag. It's uh, put it in the in the category of, you know, when what should happen doesn't. If you have a stock that has, you know, just captured the twenty, back tested, rallied thirty percent. If you have an ETF, rallies fifty percent. After capturing and testing the 20 and the 40, then the first back test of the 20 and the 40 don't lead to a new all time high. This is very, very rare for an ETF in a bull market. So it's obvious there's something wrong. If people um, have been only trading the meme stocks, or uh, the weaker stocks, you've you've seen the liquidation that's taken place. Uh, we can show you one of those now, right? Since IWM topped, the meme stocks have gone sideways to down. They all look like IWM. And this all looks like a series of lower highs and lower lows since that time frame. And it's what I see now as well. A series of lower highs and lower lows. Now we've got a little higher low, higher high pattern forming on the weekly to try to correct it. I have to hold 210.68 and then set another high. And that might be what they do. But again, structurally, I see A, B, C up, 
which leads to another one of these, right? Impulse move lower, ABC up, impulse move lower. That's what I see right now. And if the bulls spend one day below 220, 219.50, there will be no reason to stay in this trade again, All right? You'll start to justify, oh, well, maybe they'll hold this gap. Look, man, they're below the 40, they're below the 200, they're below the 20, the 10, the five, they're below all the moving averages after tagging them two times. That's not how it works. You tag it two, three times because your, your goal is to slice through it, right? tagged it once, came back a second time, came back two, three times to get rejected. You slice through it. That's what happens. You don't touch it three times for any other reason but to slice through. So if IWM can't get their crap together, they're going to pull everything down. Everything will correct. And this is why IWM is the leading indicator. It's the, it's, it is the market leading indicator. It's the best uh, uh, for risk on risk off, right? She's been essentially risk off since February 10th. That's exactly the same day, exactly the same day. This stock topped. So this is, I mean, it's all the same market guys. It's all the same market, right? They've been distributing the meme stocks, the IWMs, the, the rest of the small cap stocks since the 10th. And this is about, you know, the best I can get for some type of count. You know, maybe the correction started here, which is what I'm saying. So that would be your ABC, ABC, something like something like that, something like A, oops, wrong one. A, B, C, D, something like this, maybe even some something that's expanding out in time. I don't really know. You know, something like this, A, B, C, D, E, something like that's possible. Again, I don't really know. All I, all I can tell you is we've got a series of higher lows and higher highs right now on the daily and weekly. And that, that this 219 level, if it were to break, would be breaking the monthly 10, the weekly, um, the weekly 40, the daily 200, right? All of these levels would be gone and it would be the third test of them. So you're, this is where the sell-off would come from. It never looks like it's just going to continue or waterfall, but this is how it waterfalls. Um, you know, break this low right here. It's that simple. It, it, it's there on all the charts. I, I identified it for you, for QQQ, for SPY, and now IWM. Break those lows. Right? They, could, they, could, they could literally um, correct into Friday and come up just shy of those lows nothing's changed, right? This market is driving everyone nuts. Um, and all uh, all it's done is go, go sideways, right? If you go back to the top, the February 10th, the close on the 10th was 225.74. The close on Friday was 221. So it's moved $4. And in that time, under the hood, um, the stocks like this have just completely eroded all all value from exactly that same February 10th date. Right? Every single low is broken um, every single time. So you can correlate these charts, right? This big correction, that big correction, that big correction, that correction, this correction. Each one of those aligns with a sell off over here. Boom, 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 boom. And you can see that under the hood, right? What were massive uptrends with massive momentum all rolled over. 
And I, I believe that's a rolling over that's taking place because of this structure. I think we're at wave five. Okay, so I, I believe we're in the last wave. I think that's your one. I think that's your two. I think this is your three. I think that's your four. The four is coming at some point. We're, we're in it. I believe it's a wave four. And, and maybe I'm wrong and it's already topped and that's why you're seeing what you're seeing. Um, but the point I'm trying to get at by bringing up this chart is that we're not here. I know everyone wants to say, oh, we just we just had the big collapse and we're in a new bull market. Okay, maybe. Or we're still in the bull market from 2009. And look at how long this took here. This one, two, right? The one took four or five years. This could go another two, three years. Definitely. But after that, Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. After that, you're going to correct back to 170 from wherever that is, at minimum 170. And possibly even back to 80, 100, 80 to 100. You know, just like you had during this 30% liquidation. I mean, this is what we're looking at, something like that from wherever it starts, wherever it starts. And it could be even worse, right? Because what if it's correcting this entire move? All right, let's say we've already topped. Let's just say we've already topped. Where would we expect it to fall? At minimum, that box. So this is the problem, you know, we've already had two big corrections. And then these as, as part of the wave three. So your rates are at zero. The 10 years going up, bonds are going up equities look like they're topping. I don't know what else to say. Have they topped? No. Um, has IWM topped? Maybe. And if we find out this week that the 200 isn't demand, that 210 isn't demand, then what you're going to find is stocks that you thought were already weak PHPs, right? They're going to keep dropping. The CGCs, they're going to keep dropping. And the Googles, which have never dropped, are going to play catch up. And gee, I mean, Go figure. A divergent high with a doji. Close it low on week. Still above the five. Nothing to be concerned about just yet. But, you know, a thousand to three thousand. What have you played that's gone up 300%? Why weren't you playing Google instead? The risk reward was way better over here. And it's just one of the best trending stocks of all time, of all time. So these guys will fall back if the markets are gonna pull back. And here's the thing, dude, we, we, don't need to, we don't need to guess. We'll know. We're in a series of higher lows and higher highs on the monthly and weekly and quarterly charts. Um, and if these things want to roll over, quadruple witching will be the perfect reason for it to, to start. And don't forget, and I will end this video on, on this note. Don't forget that 
the best reversals always start during an end of quarter. So a September, a quadruple witching is always at the end of a quarter. A September, a March, right? These are in April, a January. These months have the end or the start of a new quarterly candle. And if you're going to reverse a longer term trend, it needs to happen on the quarterly, monthly charts. Um, so just keep that in mind. After quadruple witching, you will have two more weeks left to close off the month. So let's take the SPY monthly, for example. If SPY is below 436 by the end of the month, you'll have a monthly, an outside monthly bearish reversal candle. You would then need to look at the quarterly chart, but you would then have at that point a quarterly bearish reversal, a monthly bearish reversal, a weekly bearish reversal. Almost all time frames would be down. The momentum would be in a bearish configuration on the daily and weekly and would be resetting on the monthly. And that's how you get a prolonged downtrend. That's how it, that's how it works. And the best example is I can I can give you is CGC where all the time frames are down. This has been time frame down basically since June. Every candle is red. And so what happens? It just goes lower. It it gets no bid at moving averages that should that should provide demand. I mean, th think about this for a second. 50% decline into the 20 period moving average in three weeks. And you couldn't get a 38% retrace, not even a 38% retrace. So, you know, when the trend shifts to down, it's going to happen like this. It's going to happen at a quarterly turn on SPY on QQQ, on SMH, on IWM, just like it did with IWM in February. And then the monthly starts to switch red. Look at the March red, big ominous doji. And then every single month has been inside since. So just take that away that we are at the point in time where we could have a massive correction. Um, I'm not calling for one. I'm not predicting one. I'm saying you don't have to call or predict the top. Trying to guess a top or a bottom on CGC's case is a fool's errand. Guessing the top on SPY or the bottom on CGC is the same bet. You're betting counter trend. Wait for the trend to reverse and then place a bet short or long. And right now, on all of these charts, all the indexes, the trends are up on the monthly, on the quarterly. If the bears want to come in and change that and start a bear market that, that lasts for three to six months, they can certainly do that. What I think is more probable is we're on wave four. We've got one more rally. We've got one more pick up all, all the, the market and go type of thing. And it's going to last five months. The question is, when does it start? It might start October, November, might start next year. But you got one rally to all-time highs left. Um, and I do believe that this is uh confirming that wave four structure now if i'm wrong then all of these things will will be topping here very soon all of them but i'm not gonna bet against the cues that's just not what i want to do I'm not, I'm not doing it not my system i'll wait for the dip and then buy the dip on the cues so just Keep in mind, keep some takeaways, guessing the top or bottom, fool's errand, don't do it. It's not what we're here to do. Identify the trend, 
recognize when it's reversing, hop on board. That's it. We can identify some aggressive entries and exits to help you know, increase profitability and reduce risk. But in the end, you must follow the trend, use a systematic approach towards telling you when the trend is reversing. I like the moving averages. You can use whatever you want. But if you do that, you won't have to guess and you can remain profitable over time. And you won't get whipsawed out of these markets. I can tell you right now, this summer was extremely boring. And now September's back and everyone wants to throw in the towel. That's how I view this. Uh, and when CN CNN and CNBC and all these sites are telling you that we're expecting a 10 to 15% market crash, um, I start to anticipate the opposite. Now, we might get one. Who knows? Um, but until that happens, I'm, I'm long. I'm staying long. I'm still long. I bought the dip on Friday. I'd like to buy Penn this coming week. I think that's the best swing trade long. And I think as soon as Penn clears weekly 40, you're going to have a much, much better um, momentum swing trade to the upside. Right now, still very early and um, could go lower. Uh, that being said, you know, let IWM show her hand and then you'll know what to do with pen, you'll know what to do with cues, you'll know what to do with everything else. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.